So Mark Jansen is a guitarist and harsh vocalist of the symphonic metal band Epica, which he formed back in 2002. They're touring Australian March, and they're playing at Melbourne on the 20th. Mark, how are we? I'm very fine, uh, thank you. Excellent. How are you? I'm really, I'm really good. I'm very excited to talk to you. Um, oh, oh, there's some stuff I want to talk to you a bit about, sort of me experiencing your music a little bit later. But let's first uh-huh. get into the tour. You have a lot going yeah. on in your music. There's a lot of vocals, obviously the the guitars, drums, the bass, as well as some orchestral stuff. How do you get that yeah. all right when you're playing a live show? Um, yeah, first of all, the, the the biggest difficulty is to get it right by our producer, because uh, and and our mixer, because they have to first of all find a format to put it all in and then once this is recorded for us it's a it's an easy task to or easy it's a, yeah in a way easier to play the, the stuff and our uh, live mixer mixes it more or less like the album but with a little uh, different live touch but all the, the, the big work is done already in the studio and to give everything a, a place and so for life it's it's just uh, uh uh, as good as possible reproduction with like I said this live sauce on top of it now uh, this is kind of an odd question but I was sort of thinking about some of your music it, there's a lot of different dynamics you've got some very aggressive loud songs and then you've got some softer songs but within yeah. all that is there sort of any songs you have difficulty playing live sort of pulling off re- re- as you were saying replicating it from the studio, from the production, onto the stage? Yes, yes, uh, especially on uh, Requiem for the Indifferent. There were quite some songs that uh, were very hard to reproduce uh, live. And uh, the, the reason for that was we wrote that, so- that album basically uh, everybody on its own in, in our own home studios. We didn't really rehearse as a band before recording the album, so we recorded all the songs. And then afterwards, uh, we found out that some songs uh, didn't really work live. <laughs> so then the album after, with the, with the Quantum Enigma, we, we completely changed our way of working and we started rehearsing every song like the good old days as a whole band. And until we really uh, found uh, uh, how we really... Uh, thought the songs were finished until that moment we kept working and uh, the album really did benefit a lot from that because every song on the Quantum Enigma we can also play live and it really works live so it's, it's not only a matter of uh, yeah, literally difficulty of playing it live but sometimes songs work live or, and sometimes they don't And but you only find out if you play them a lot as a band as a whole Already before going, uh, before entering the studio, and uh, that that way of working, we we continued also with the new album. So speaking of the new album, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, <laughs> how how is that progressing? At what stage is it in its development? Uh, at the moment, we're recording uh, the strings, and uh, right after the choirs will get recorded and uh, the brass. So um, we are getting into the final stage of the recordings and uh, drums, bass, guitars, uh, pianos, everything has been recorded already. Uh, And then after the tour, uh, we will record the lead vocals of Simone and uh, Mike Runs. And then it's already basically time to start uh, the mixing process pretty soon. Very exciting. Now, in terms of the actual, I guess, how the album is I don't know any better way to describe it is, is there any sort of changes from the last album The Continent Enigma is that you proceeded in any new directions emphasised any elements um, the biggest difference I think is uh, on The Quantum Enigma we we already used uh, real strings but uh, still uh, samples for the brass and now with the new album we do everything everything we possibly can uh, live so also the brass section we we hired a brass section to play all the all this, the, the the brass parts, and I think the album will also really benefit from that. Uh, even though samples are live nowadays so good, but still, if if there's real people playing the playing the music, it makes still a big difference. And uh, 
So I think that will be the biggest difference. Now, I was never yeah. really a fan of sort of this phonic metal. I, I don't know if you that's a term you like. But I was never a fan of that kind of stuff in general. But in listening to all the albums in preparation for this interview, I noticed a lot of development throughout the years, and I actually appreciated a lot of the later albums. How do you think you've sort of come in terms of songwriting over those years? Uh, yeah, I think we, we learned a lot, and... Uh, uh, we we always to yeah to we always made music we really felt like making so we never listened to what what was popular at at the, at the time or what other bands were doing uh, but we developed in a, in a, I noticed in a, in a different way than most bands around us when we when this was this uh, this female fronted scene was pretty big back in the days around two thousand. Um, Many of these bands became more uh, commercial uh, later on, and uh, we always uh, developed in a, in a more, uh, yeah, more in a metal direction. And many people at that time said, "You are crazy! You're you're ruining your own career." But now, when I look back, I think that was uh, even though we did just what we felt like doing, and I would have never done it different. But it was smart actually because. We, because that made us stand out, and uh, that's why we're also still around and still growing. So I think at that point people thought it was a stupid move, but uh, <laughs> it uh, appeared to be uh, a good one. one. One of the things I learned, two of the things I should say, I learned about you while reading your bios is last year you had the first Epic Metal Fest, which is organized by you guys, and last year you yeah. also received the Boomer Export Award, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but which is a Dutch award given to the band with the most international success. I think that sort of speaks to what you're saying. Yes, exactly. And uh, even though I'm not a big fan of uh, awards and, and these parties uh, where awards get uh, handed over to to musicians, uh, I, uh, I tend to stay away far from these kind of parties. But still, it... it uh, it was a it was an honor to get this this award because it proved indeed that at that point we were uh, the biggest uh, most successful band from the Netherlands uh, internationally uh, heavier band so yeah like you said that that proves that we accomplished our, our goal and uh, but there's still so much more to do and uh, it doesn't end there now, in terms of the way your band's set up, for those who I, I, you know, I don't know, but uh, when we play this interview, they will know because we'll be playing a song afterwards. Uh, you've got different dynamics. You've got a balance of uh, the softer softer elements of music, uh, definitely the harsher elements of heavy metal music, uh, uh, operatic vocals, uh, softer sort of female mm -hmm. vocals, the grunts, as you say. Is it ever a challenge to balance those out when you're writing a record? Uh, it, it's always a challenge, that's for sure. But for some reason, uh, all the elements they fall automatically on the, on the, on the right. They, yeah, it's hard to ex explain. But after all those years, you, you, you yeah, you found a, a way to to make it naturally work. So it was back in the days. It was more like a like a puzzle, a search, and now it, it naturally happens. Uh, so. Still, sometimes we discuss, hey, it might be better to have choir here instead of uh, Simone singing, or maybe we should not use grunts here. So the, these little discussions still happen, but usually it's quite obvious where we got to put what. And uh, But sometimes it's, it's even good to, to, to still uh, experiment a bit because uh, it's always also good to... Uh, Go off the the, 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 the path and, and try and explore new things. And with every record, we also try that, and uh, we we sometimes try ideas that at first seem uh, ridiculous, but then still work out. So that's also we learned something that we try out everything, even ridiculous ideas that seem ridiculous, and later on appear to be a great idea. Hmm. Because that that's the way it works. Uh, you you should never. Uh, say that something doesn't work before trying it. You've had a number of songs yeah. which are, I guess you might say, critical of organized religion. Why did you feel that this idea was important to express in the lyrics you wrote? Um, yeah, uh, this, at this stage we, we don't really uh, uh, burn our, our fingers to that topic anymore. We said everything we wanted to say. 
And uh, the the thing is, when you whatever you say, there's people getting pissed off. And because religious religion, religions, that is a topic you can you can never write about without satisfying uh, with, with satisfying everybody. So um, what I really our message was, uh, it's very good that everybody has uh, does find peace in some religion, and that's that's a great thing. As long as everybody respects each other, as soon as there is some fundamentalism growing in, in a certain religion, uh, and that can be any religion, then uh, then the problems start, and then there's no respect anymore. Then it's just wanting that everybody else also start believing that religion, because or else that person is a heretic. And this is something I cannot stand. You have to le- leave everybody free to believe whatever he or she wants without uh, problems and uh, so that's the, that's basically the message uh, and and even though that is something you think that everybody can only agree on but even that is something that really pisses off some people <laughs> apparently mm. and uh, so <laughs> so yeah I, I just stopped writing about religions because what else can I add to that what I said already and uh, now we write more about uh spiritual and uh, scientific uh, topics which uh, not so easily can piss off people um, I thought the you know the writing about the you know not not directly about it but in relation to writing about the discoveries of you know quantum science I thought was incredibly fascinating yeah and I, I love that topic and I love to read about it and uh, also when, when when I can talk about it in interviews and other people uh, find it fascinating as well uh, because the, in the, for example in the quantum enigma that, that main topic that you when you observe something uh, that you influence it and it is not possible to observe something without influencing what you observe that's the whole fundamental thing of, of the universe and when, when people start getting interested in these topics as well but because we wrote uh, songs about it that's, that's all we need uh, Mark Jansen is guitarist and harsh focus of the symphonic metal band Epica. Uh, they're touring Australia in March, uh, playing in Melbourne on the 20th. Mark, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for your time.